I'm dealing with facts. So You're dealing with comments, I'm dealing with no, facts. No, 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 no. no uh, what I said are facts. You want to call it terrorism, fair enough. A war in this region, uh, I mean, means a problem for the entire world. Is it unthinkable? For the last two years, the Gulf state of Qatar has been blockaded by a quartet of Arab states which accuse it of supporting terrorism. My guest this week here in Berlin is the Qatari Foreign Ministry spokesperson, Lulwa al Qatar. She has always denied the charges, but with question marks going back many years, do those denials ring true? Lulwa al Qatar, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you for inviting me. Last March, Qatar put 28 people and entities on a terrorism list, which included several Qatari nationals. Some of these people had already been on an Arab list before. Why did your government delay putting them there? Well, this is not uh, entirely accurate. Uh, the idea of having designated lists were, was uh, new altogether. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the Qataris who were on the list, four of them to be very precise and specific, were already under watch uh, because they were under the Security Council uh, designated list and all of the measures had been applied on them actually years prior to designating them. But and when the Arab states put them on the list, you said the charges were baseless. Uh, no, that's not accurate. Let's put things into context. June 5th, 2017, Four blockading countries, four Arab countries decided to blockade Qatar. No, we understand that. We understand. Yeah. I'm talking so, specifically about these 28 enough. people and entities. Yeah. So to put things into context again, when they did that, when they uh, blockaded the country, when they expelled our people from their own countries, uh, pre uh, prevented them from access to Mecca and Medina. No, no, I, I understand. I don't want when to they, go through the whole yeah. history of the blockade. So what they did, what they did then, is they wanted to have an excuse. So they have uh, put forward many accusations around terrorism, etc. We said that those accusations were baseless, and this was our position. In April last year, Washington's Near East Institute gave evidence to a House subcommittee on terrorism, where it said Doha had been less than forthcoming on the issue of prosecuting terrorism financiers in Qatari courts. You know what the issue is? You're quoting a think tank in the US, but you're not quoting the State Department, which said that the Memorandum of Understanding signed between Qatar and the US puts it ahead of its neighbors, including Saudi and United Arab Emirates. Well, for a long period of time, the State Department has had quite a few reservations about it. Let's go through the history. In 2009, a classified cable from the US State Department to its missions in the Gulf pointed to your disinterest in the subject. Qatar has adopted a largely passive approach to cooperating with the U.S. against terrorist financing, it said. In February 2007, two, two years earlier, former U.S. Treasury official Daniel Glazer said Qatar had not yet made the kind of fundamental decisions on combating terrorist financing. These are hardly glowing endorsements no, of what, your position yeah, on but, terrorism. But the, issue, the only issue with the question is, is that it sheds light on some facts and ignores completely other facts, including the Memorandum of Understanding with the US, including the fact that the first legislation we had against terrorism was in the year 2004. You can always sign and, pieces of paper, Lolwa al Qatar, no. but if you don't do anything no, about don't. them, no, no, we do. they're we do. meaningless. We do, we do. Well, what do you think these uh, comments are saying? Well, there they're are other comments. You haven't got the political will. No. As late as October 2017, the US Secretary Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin said terrorists were continuing to use both the charity and money service sectors in Qatar for illicit financing. And why haven't you, why and, you cracked down on that? No, 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 absolutely. And Mr. Mnuchin, a few months ago, was in Qatar, met with His Highness and actually made remarks that are to the contrary of what you just mentioned. In addition to that, January 2000 and. Uh, uh, 19, we had the second strategic dialogue between Doha and the US, and in that very dialogue, the joint communique that came out of it actually commanded Qatar for its actions against terrorism. What matters, and, Lulwa and al Qatar, are results, Rida. doesn't it? Results. No, no. Let, let's let's no. actually, let's to, to, actually to, to, look to, at some of your results, because 
you have treated your terror suspects with extraordinary leniency or carelessness, yeah, no, no, no. and I wonder why. Let's take some examples. Ibrahim al Bakr was released from jail after he promised not to conduct terrorist activity in Qatar. This was a man who had plotted military attacks against the US military bases in yes. Qatar. Um, Powerful punishment. Yeah. Promise to be a good boy and we'll let Tim, you out of jail. Tim, Tim, I'm afraid that you're not even giving me the chance. I mean, you're taking so long to uh, state, you know, spell out the accusations, but I need a chance to I'm respond. I'm dealing in facts. So, exactly. And I'm dealing with facts. So You're dealing with comments. I'm dealing with no, facts. No, 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 no. The, no. Uh, what I said are facts. The fact that the State Department said that Qatar is ahead of its neighbors. This is a fact. The fact that Mr. Mnuchin was in Doha and commanded Qatar only a few months ago. This is a fact. Fact. The fact that the name that you just mentioned and the four, the only four names that we have on designated list as Qataris, they had actions taken against them years ago, not only today. Those are the facts that uh, you know you should put in consideration. Okay, let me let me give you a, let me give you a few more facts, Lulwa Al Qatar. Let me give you a few more facts. In, in addition to this and that, I, I might want to go to a point that you mentioned earlier. The problem is quoting quoting countries. Uh, that accused Qatar of terrorism as if they were in a position to accuse Qatar of terrorism, whereas these three countries, Egypt and Saudi and United Arab Emirates, had their own citizens participating in September 11th. Let's look at Abdul Latif al kuwari arrested in 2016, supposedly served his sentence under house arrest, very nice and comfortable, for coordinating the funding between Qatari finances and Al-Qaeda. Serious charge, just a few months at home, this is a joke, isn't it? No, it's not. Because there is something called rule of law. How many designated people are on the US list? You have uh, US citizens, for example. This is called rule of law. The people that you mentioned are on watch lists. There is a huge difference between being on a watch list. This means you're a suspect and there are no charges that were proven against you. The question you. is how effective your it, it actions is, are. The, really? No, no. the question is, the question how, is how effective they are. They are very they effective are. and they are really? in compliance, absolutely in compliance with the UN Security Council measures. Can you tell me what those measures are? How effective was it for Saad al Kabi? The US government said you'd yeah. shut down his terrorist fundraising in 2014, but by 2017, the Treasury noted that he was still actively involved in financing Al Qaeda a year later. I'll tell you one That's thing. an effective measure. Tim, Tim, That's an effective you, measure. It, it is very effective. I mean, the fact. It doesn't look like it. No, it is. So, do you know what the UN Security Council measures are against people who are designated? It's not up to me to know no, what it, it is. No, I'm, it dealing, is. I'm dealing no, no, with facts. No, there are three facts. I'm no. dealing with facts. No, no, here. those are the facts. I'm telling really? you that there are three measures. I mean, you can look them up online. Three measures that need to be taken. One is to prevent those individuals, uh, individuals from access to weapons. Two is to seize all of their financial transactions. And three is ban on travel. All of these three international measures have been exercised on these people. Now, if you want to that's ask, why That's why their funding want, networks were no, up and no, running no, two us, years later. If you want us to go beyond international law, then maybe you should state it clearly. Lulwa al -Qatar, the other thing that you do is you play games with the West. Where word, word games, in fact, supporting the Palestinian group Hamas, but insisting on calling them a resistance organization and denying their terrorists. Your counterterrorism envoy, Mutlak al Katani, said in Washington in April last year Hamas is not a terrorist organization. And it's not. So sending suicide bombers to blow up buses, killing civilians, women and children, sending rockets indiscriminately over civilian areas, that's not terrorism. There isn't a single Arab country that designates Hamas as a terrorist organization. That's neither we're here not, nor there. No, that's neither here nor there. We're not unique in that position. We are not unique in that position. As a matter of fact, there are many doesn't other... doesn't matter whether you're unique or not. That's not the issue. Many Sending are... suicide no, no, no. bombers to blow up buses with women and children many, on them. Many, Is that not terrorism? Many, we don't approve of is any that, of those violations. Terrorism? We don't approve of any of those violations. However, many European countries don't designate if that. It's, if it's Do, not terrorism, what would you call it then? I'll Blowing up civilians on buses. What would you call that, Lulwa? Okay, Tim. I'm calling. It's, it's. What would you call it? No, it's on. It's it's violence that's not acceptable against it's civilians. It's terrorism. You want to call it terrorism? Fair enough. But the problem is, you are not dealing fairly with a different 
um, uh, parties here. We're talking in the context of occupation. There is Israeli occupation that is killing people on a daily basis. Do you de describe this as terrorism or not? How do you hope to play any meaningful role yeah. in the war on terror if you won't accept the common definition of what terrorism no, actually we, we, is? No, 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 we do accept that. We do accept that. However, Tim, the thing is, when you were describing the actions of Hamas, you gave yourself the liberty of describing this as terrorism. But when I asked you about what the Israeli occupation is doing against children and women, you shied away from describing this as terrorism. I talked to is the Israelis a, about what they're that's, doing. Do you I'm describe that you, as terrorism? I am, talk, Have, I am I, talking to you yes. about your positions vis-a-vis these people, vis-a-vis Hamas. Enough, fair, enough, fair enough, but do you agree that there needs I'm to be... I'm not here to agree or disagree, I'm fair here enough. to answer, do those, ask your questions. Sure, sure, I, I, I totally understand. But once again, should there be a unified uh, definition of terrorism that is acceptable internationally, then maybe it should not be based on double standards. It's, it's not that difficult. Cambridge Dictionary defines it as violent action for political purposes. That's it. I, That's it. Fair enough then should be applicable on both parties. We're talking about Hamas here. And you're, I'm talking you're, about the Israeli... The application. fact is your anti-terrorist credentials have been further put in doubt by your government's readiness to allow hate speech from your mosques and on state broadcasts. Yeah, in right. April last year, the Anti-Defamation League, which monitors hate speech, said your government had continued to use its platforms to promote strident anti-Semitic preachers. Why? No, that's not true. I can give you and some examples. I'll tell you one thing, I'll tell you one thing. There always needs to be a balance between freedom of expression and what people think and then what the government should do. We have many platforms in Qatar that have many different voices, right, right represented. So to give you an example. Your government provides no. preachers with guidance, don't they, for the no. Friday sermons. No, by the way, by the way. It reviews content way, and reserves the right to take Tim. judicial action against clerics who break the rules. No, this is not. I'll, I'll tell That's you That's not true? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. I mean, once again, we have platforms in Doha that represent all voices, including voices that are considered by many Muslim conservatives as voices that should not be represented. We represent all voices in Qatar with no exclusion. A Friday sermon, December 2017, Muhammad al muraiki he told Muslims that Jews have enmity and hatred towards you in their blood and their veins. He described the Jewish people as your deceitful, the lying, treacherous, fornicating, intransigent enemy who has despoiled, corrupted, ruined and killed and will not stop. And he called on all Muslims to yeah. cleanse Al-Aqsa from the filth of the Jews. You put that out, no, you no, put that no, out no, on no, your broadcast. No. You even promoted it. This is, this is not acceptable to describe... You accepted it? No, 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 no. So I... unacceptable is it that your government accepted it? No, 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 the government did not accept it. When did the government issue a statement accepting that? They promoted it. No, they did not oh, promote they did. it. No, they didn't, of course. I'm telling you, I'm at a Your president. government has pledged am, to prevent am, hate am, speech. I, Why do you continue I to am, allow it? Listen, I am telling you I'm a representative of the government, and I'm telling you that any description of any group is in such terms, is absolutely not acceptable. It's discrimination, and we don't approve of it yet, yet. In other venues, you have Islamophobic discourse happening in Europe, in the West. We're not talking about Europe. You're not, you're not responsible for Europe. I'm, I'm, you're responsible for what goes enough, on in but, Qatar. No, 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 but listen, you cannot dictate what I'm going to say now. There is, those voices, Islamophobic voices, are represented in many countries. Yet, we don't hear that it's considered freedom of expression in other countries. I'm not saying, once again, I'm reiterating my position that those terms are not acceptable, yet we should receive fair treatment, fair treatment. And by the way, in many other countries, including Israel, there are many who are using the same terms exactly against Muslims. Back in the early 2000s, Qatar made many promises to democratize. I'm wondering why the process has stalled, because yeah. the 2003 constitution stipulated that 30 out of 45 members of the Emir's advisory council would be filled through elections every four years. 16 years on from that constitution, no elections. They've been repeatedly postponed. Yes. Why? Why? The answer is very straightforward. Unfortunately, some of our neighbors 
were not happy with that. They thought that Since when do you care what your neighbors think? Well, no, actually we, we do, Tim. We do. And now we realize, after two years of the blockade, we realize that maybe we should have our own path, independent path away from them. And that's why. You made after a commitment the after the your constitution and this is exactly contains a commitment. No, 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 absolutely. 16 years on, yeah, it hasn't you, been but, fulfilled. No, 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 but what you're not aware of is that after the blockade, actually it's been announced that the Shura Council will be elected and the legislations are being worked on. You've also made a lot of promises on workers' rights. Human rights groups acknowledge that you have finally, and after much delay, taken measures to improve the appalling conditions yeah. that migrant workers in Qatar have had to put up with. Why did you take so long? No, uh, the, the question of the guest workers is definitely a complex question. There is no question about our commitment when it comes to their rights. There has uh, been over the years plenty of question about your commitment. Mm, uh, fair enough. I mean, those were basically uh, based on some media campaigns, etc. But they're based but, on the truth. No, no, they're based uh, on the, yes, on the yes. lousy conditions in no, which I'll, these migrant yes. workers had to and operate. And we acknowledge that. And we acknowledge that. As a matter of fact, the most recent Amnesty International report, we have welcomed that. Uh, Human Rights Watch are welcome to Doha on a regular basis. Uh, and we receive their criticism very well, yet we made... They still say you're dragging your feet. Uh, yes, but they said that they, we made great um, uh, progress. ILO in November 2017 closed the issue, the case against us, and we Having have... threatened you with uh, a full investigation no, no. if you didn't clean up your act. No, I'll tell you one they thing. They had to threaten you with a full no, they, investigation. No, no. And yes, they did. It's a fact. No, the thing is, that, but this is the difference, Tim. We deal with constructive criticism very positively. That's why we receive any constructive criticism very well. So let me just continue that part. After closing the complaint against Qatar at the ILO, November 2017, we signed a three-year agreement with them, and the ILO issued a statement saying that should all the measures in that agreement be implemented, Qatar will be uh, a leading example in the region. This is what we aspire to, and there is no question about our commitment to the guest workers. They are helping us in developing our country. Your treatment of foreigners in Qatar has attracted the attention of the UN Convention Against Torture and other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment. In June last year, they cited a catalogue of appalling conditions inside Doha's deportation centre. These include inadequate sanitation, insufficient ventilation, shortage of bedding and food. Yeah. You are the richest country on earth. Yeah. Shortage of food and bedding, no proper lavatories, no proper ventilation, no proper food. Do you feel no shame at any of this? Every, anyone who hears about this should feel that, there is no question about it. Are you ashamed it. of this? I'll tell you one thing, Tim. The point is... Uh, you could those... answer my question. No, no, it's no, a simple no, yes is, or no. Are you ashamed is, of this? This is a violation. We're working on it. There is nothing systematic. How long does it take to work on it? You're the richest country on earth. N because, How long does this take no, 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 to provide takes, proper lavatories takes, for human beings? No, it takes a long time. It takes for a reason. For really? A... Really? Why? Do, do you want an answer? Yes. Fair enough. So the answer is the following. The problem, the serious problem we're facing is the following. There are thousands of medium and small businesses that are very difficult to control. So I'm talking the, about the deportation the, 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 the You laws, run it. The Your laws, government the, runs it. The laws and regulations have developed massively. So minimum wages have been applied. Exit permit has been abolished. Um, what's known Not as... Not for everybody. You promised to abolish it for everybody by the end of this year. It's, so it hasn't been completely no, no, abolished yet. No, I'll tell you. There is a difference between having the law and law enforcement. To give you an example, there are laws that condemn, like that for, forbid uh, crimes everywhere. Does this mean that crime stops? Of course, no. There are many violations, yes. Law you don't have a parliament. You don't have people who object. We, we, you don't no, have no, no. people you have to convince. Then you're not, no. Your emir in 2014 then, said, the, the, we are going to do this. Then, it's unacceptable. No, the, then you're he not. Said it's unacceptable. No, then you haven't done the, the homework properly. The National Human Rights Committee in Qatar issues a report on yearly basis 
about the conditions of the migrant workers. That's why there's no proper ventilation, no, no proper no, bedding, no proper it. food, no. and no proper no, lavatories why, in no, your no, deportation that, that's, centre. That's, that's an appalling state of no, affairs. That's, no, that's why we're improving. Why did Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, that we said that we have made great uh, progress? You never do anything unless you're no, pushed no, to the no, limit and you we drag do. your feet do you know, over do you know, every bit of do you know progress when, and every reform. That's completely inaccurate. You do the minimum, do, we don't the minimum do, no, necessary. We, no, we don't do the minimum. We are the best when it comes to our region, by the way. Really? Of course, we are. Can you give me examples from re, uh, re, neighboring countries? And The I mean, UN Convention Against just, Torture and the other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment says that what is striking is the number of times the committee says you have failed to provide the UN with crested information, particularly about your justice system. Why are you so reluctant to live up to this aspect of your obligations? I'll get to that, but I just need to address one point that you mentioned about that we don't do actions towards uh, you know, the conditions of the migrant workers unless we're pushed to. In 2008, we have launched our vision 2030, and right in that vision, one of the four pillars about, was about human development and improving the conditions for the migrant workers was there and ever since. And 10 years later, been, the UN is still saying no proper food, Tim, no proper buy, ventilation, Tim, no proper lavatories, me, no proper bedding. Fair enough, without, it's taken a long time. No. Absolutely. It's it taken a it long time. It's unforgivable. It has isn't taken it? a long time, the entire world. There are violations in every and you're the single richest, country. And you're the richest country in the world. Why have you not complied no, no, with the UN's request for information? I'll tell you why. why. No, no, but. but on I torture. Mean, no, no, you keep insisting why? on the richest country. I need to address this. There are violations against migrant workers in every country in the world. I'm not Without talking about every country, Fair I'm enough. talking about yours. No, well, this means that we, we are we not. We can play exception. what about games no, but what indefinitely. What about no. Venus? What about Mars? What's happening Fair. on the moon? No. But I'm talking about no. what happens in Qatar. That what which happens you don't seem to want to address. No, I said that, no, we want to address it. I said that we have improved. I said that we have welcomed the Amnesty International report. I mean, once which again, still, we which received... Which still says that you are not living up totally to your commitments. Exactly, and we have welcomed that. And we said that we are working on this. There is a huge difference between having violations that are systematic and violations that happen because of the complexity of the situation. You feel no shame, do you, for putting people in these conditions, do you? Tim, we're not putting people under these conditions. No, no, who we puts are... them in the deportation centre? Uh, once you again, do. No, one sec no, this is completely not acceptable. This is what I said. What I said was very clear. There isn't something that is systematic, and as soon as we discover a violation, we act upon that. There is no question about this. Look at the blockade after two years, sure. the blockade from the Arab Quartet. Your yes. foreign minister recently attended in the last few days summits in Saudi Arabia. Does this mean the block the is minister. ending? The prime minister, the prime yes. Minister, yes. Uh, no, uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, this only shows our commitment to Arab cooperation, basically. Uh, and it was the result of the mediation from the side of the Emir of Kuwait. We honored that, and our Prime Minister attended. We he had, didn't like the tone um, of, of the course. statements no, at the course. end, and not, dealing uh, with yeah. Iran. He thought they were too harsh on Iran. No, that's not accurate. We had reservations on the statements, and I'm about to explain why. Because, and Iraq, by the way, had reservations, and other countries also had reservations. The reason is the following. I mean, we're meeting at the GC, as the GCC, and yet, the Gulf no, Cooperation the, Council. The Gulf Cooperation Council. Not much cooperation these Not days. much cooperation. This is a problem. So, right in that statement, they say the opposite. They say that the cooperation is great. And they decided to ignore the fact that there is a blockade. They decided to ignore the fact that there are thousands of families that are currently separated because of that blockade. And then at the Arab level, they refused to address Libya despite what's happening and the horrors that are happening because of, unfortunately, incitement by the same blockading countries for the General Haftar to displace thousands of people in Libya. They refused to address Syria. That's why, of course, we objected to those statements and we're not alone. Are you afraid that with the US reinforcing its strike power, naval strike power in the region, with the focus of Saudi Arabia and UAE, that there will be war with Iran. Are you afraid of that? Well, what we heard from the American administration is that they want to have dialogue, they're not for um, escalation. So 
I don't think that any party wants escalation at this point. And you are satisfied that it isn't going to escalate out of control at any point? No, of course. We're watching. With the instability, we're, yeah. instability caused by the blockade against you, instability caused by yes. America putting uh, reinforcements of its forces in the area. A, a war in this region, I mean, means a problem for the entire world. Is it unthinkable? Uh, we're hoping that uh, it is. Uh, but then, I mean, we have to be very, very uh, cautious uh, as we're watching. We need to have all parties to be talking to each other. There are countries that are mediating. Of course, the Prime Minister of Japan was just in Iran. So we're hoping that some of those efforts will eventually lead into, you know, constructive if results. Not, if not? I mean, if not, it's not only for Qatar to answer this question. It's for the entire world to answer this question. All right. Lulwa Akata, good to have you on Conflict Zone. Thank, Thank you, you so much, then. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot.